fam, it's your girl Jonna and welcome to another episode of the Fill In My Cup Be Right Back podcast. So this podcast is a wellness podcast that hopefully will inspire you to fill your cup so that you can pour into the people and passions in your life. So this episode, the title is Mistaking Your Weakness for Strength. Now I know that sounds backwards. You might be thinking like, girl, um, that's not how that goes. It's mistaking my um, kindness for weakness, right? That's how the phrase goes. But I switch it up on purpose. Mistaking your weakness for strength. I am hearing more and more of this conversation, especially amongst black women. We don't want to be strong. We tired of being strong. I don't want to be strong. I want to live the soft life, right? And we're hearing that more. Why is that? Because this whole idea of being strong has been put on us for so many years. We all know the history. <clears throat> so this idea that we're just going to pile things up on you and your ability to kind of withstand and, and keep putting up with crap is a strength. That's a good thing. And the idea that we have to keep putting on and putting up face and pretending that we good and we got it. And we we're, sometimes we can get so, and I say we because I've been here. I've been this person, okay? I, I have been this person. You're so busy trying to prove that you got everything. You got everything. And really, all you're doing is you're just trying to control everything and everybody because you're afraid. It is fear-based. And we got to start recognizing that because it's a false sense of strength. It's not real. And it is causing our weakness. Because not being able to let people help you, not being able to even ask for help, and doing all these extra things that we really don't have to do, all for to be able to get on social media or poke our chest out to our significant other or family, whoever, that I'm strong and look at I'm doing that, I'm doing it all. <laughs> it is fake. Because when you get down to the nitty gritty, you really don't want to have to do it all. Nobody should. That's not how we're built to be. We're communal, right? So you need support and help from others. The reason why people don't ask for help or don't allow people to help them is not because they're so strong. It's because they're controlling. I used to say, I'm not a control freak, I'm a control enthusiast. And I used to hee hee and ha ha, I thought it was funny. It was not. It's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny when you are ruining relationships with the people that you care about because you're trying to be controlling. And really you're controlling because it's fear based. It's not because if the person does it their way, the world is going to crumble and fall down. It's because you're afraid that if it's not done your way, that something is going to happen and somehow it's going to reflect on you. The biggest lesson that I learned with this definitely was with my husband. And I think a lot of women, and I'm going to speak to this because this podcast is designed to hopefully talk to women like myself, mothers like myself, who are married or who are mothers. A lot of this stuff we're doing, we don't have to do. A lot of this help we're supposedly offering to our husbands, they don't need our help. They need us to fall back and let them let them help us. And then we'll get upset when the person doesn't want to help anymore. Why would they want to help if the help that they offer is never how you want to be helped? Oh, well, they should just do it how I want to do it. Nobody wants to be walking around feeling like they have to do everything the way you want it done. That gets old eventually. People want to have their own autonomy over how they do simple tasks. You're talking about, most of the time I'm talking about simple tasks. You're not even talking about big stuff. And I use the, the example of the dishwasher because why do we care so much about how something so simple is done? It doesn't matter as long as it gets done. That is internal work that we have to do. That's work I had to do. I had to go to a therapist to help me get out of that idea and mentality that I it had to be done the way I wanted it done. 
And I fooled myself into thinking that the reason why I wanted it done that way is because I think my way is best. And it's really not that. It's really, yes, I might think that's a great way, but why am I putting that on this other person? Because I want to control it because I have some type of fear about it. I'm worried about how you clean the house because I'm afraid that if someone comes to our house and it's not clean the way that I feel like it should be clean, they're going to judge me. So I don't even want to let you do it a certain way or I don't want you to, you know, do something with the kids. The real fear is it's going to reflect on me some type of way. And what I had to realize is that ain't my business. You know, I remember my husband telling me one time, I hold my own. If it's a problem with how I did something, I hold my own. You ain't got to cover me. I cover myself. And that always resonates in my mind is that I don't have to cover him in, in that way every time with everything. Now, if there's something, of course, if there's things that I have information on that he may not have information on, of course, I'm going to share with him that information. But we're not talking about those types of things. We're talking about having the bandwidth and the flexibility and the releasing of the control that is fear based to allow for people to come in and help so that we can replenish ourselves and we can strengthen ourselves. And the one thing that my therapist shared with me that I have been sharing ever since he told me and I was just like, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. I needed a, a visual to kind of understand. And he said, think of bamboo. Bamboo is one of the strongest materials out there, but its strength is in its flexibility because the bamboo sways with the strong wind. So as the wind blows, the bamboo sways and that is where it finds its strength. It finds its strength and its ability to be flexible and let things come and go as they please. Similar to like the cloud and sky analogy that we discussed in the last episode, the bamboo and the strong wind is similar here. Our strength is in our flexibility and just being able to let things flow. Being able to kind of bend and sway is really a strength. It's not a weakness. And sometimes we think being strong is being the rock and being the big strong tree that doesn't budge. We're not going to budge. We're going to, I'm this, that, uh, uh. <laughs> And guess what? When that strong wind blows, that tree, it can't, it can't be flexible. And you know what happens? It falls because it is so rigid. It's like a rubber ball and a rock. If you drop that rubber ball, it's just going to bounce. If you drop the rock, it could break into pieces. Because it's so hard, that impact is going to break into pieces. It's not able to absorb the impact. Like the rubber ball can absorb the impact and it just bounces back. So we have to be aware. Is my strength a strength or is my strength really a weakness? Am I really being strong or am I just being rigid? Am I really being a boss or am I really just being controlling? Some of us are saying, running around, how we a boss, I'm a boss, I'm a boss. And we're really just bossy. It's so much boss, 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 and nobody's being leaders. And what we really need more is leaders. Because you can be a boss. Yes, you can be a boss, meaning that you're knowledgeable and you're able to execute. But are we being leaders? Are we flexible? And that's the key. And if we need to go talk to a therapist about that, do that. Get the tools so that you can build up your strength and your flexibility. Be like bamboo, okay? So some ways that we can address that is first of course, just acknowledging that that's what it is. Acknowledging it, keeping it real that yes, I'm just really being controlling. And then once we address that, then address the fear. What's the real fear that's at the root of the controlling? And where is it rooted from? Is it rooted from childhood? Is it rooted from some sort of experience that we had? And then also just releasing some of that control. And sometimes we have to just put a hard stop to it and just learning how to breathe and just deal with the anxiety that sometimes comes from releasing the control and releasing the fear. And once we're able to do that, and then we start to see that 
bamboo sort of loosen up and we start experiencing some light winds and we're able to be flexible and then we see something strong winds and we're able to be flexible then we start to really work that muscle we start to build a true strength because i think the true strength that we all really want is to be able to withstand the storm and not break to be able to deal with the emotions and not break and to be able to rest when we need to and be able to you know fill our tanks being able to uh, give up some of the control allow others to help and do without us being involved that's what this is all about that's what this podcast is all about helping us to be able to fill our cups thank you for tuning in to this week's episode i hope that you were able to fill your cup and we'll be right back in the next episode bye